help give indigenous youth a voice is the quote on the Wopakoni mobile trailer that's traveling across Turtle Island. They have been parked in Thunder Bay now for three weeks, and we got the honor to meet and get to know the Wapakoni team who has brought empowerment and the act of resiliency as a form of healing to local artists, songwriters, filmmakers, and musicians where video and music become powerful tools. Okay. We are here in the Intercity parking lot with a very special group. Uh, Thomas, bonjour. Bonjour. Welcome to Thunder Bay. Again, right? Yeah, um, miigwech to have us here. Yeah, uh, it's the second time we come to Fort William First Nation territory and now we're in Thunder Bay City per se. So we're really happy to be here. Right on. Um, so the target group that you're that you're aiming for is uh, you said 15 to 35 mostly, um, but you're open to others. Can you tell us what you're what you're looking for? Uh, we're here to give an opportunity of like for any indigenous person to have access to our equipment, and we do filmmaking with uh, any artists that would like to participate. Uh, we also do sound recording, so we've got like this studio in the back uh, which can record music and edit the movies and put them wherever they want us to put them. What is the history of of where you guys came from? Like you guys are doing so much, like you can make such big huge changes in where you're, where you're locating and, and heading to. Uh, well, we're based in Montreal, uh, but Wapikoni was uh, originally created in a joint um, exercise between Manon Barbeau, which is a documentarist from uh, Quebec, and the Atikamek uh, Band Council, which is a na First Nation in Quebec, and the Youth Council of the Assembly of First Nation of Quebec and Labrador. So we were created 15 years ago, and we've been on the road ever since. We now have more than a thousand uh, short films on record, and uh, about 700 music pieces too. And we can find those online, or not, uh, sorry, in, in the archives, right? Yeah, well, we, we've got a website, it's uh, wepikoni.ca. And, uh, well, there it's, it's in French at first, but you can go and choose to go in English. And we have, uh, yeah, you have the option. Most of the film are subtitled, but some of them are in Spanish or in Sami or in lots of different indigenous language from around the world. Yeah. So the doors are opened, right? Totally open. We're expecting as many people as, as you can muster to come here and we'd be super happy to uh, enjoy and uh, have a chat or uh, work on a movie with anybody who comes yeah. and the times um, the door are open from five uh, from 11 uh, a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, most of the days like it, you maybe we'll be out shooting but most probably there'll be something someone here to open the doors yeah. somebody's always here at the trailer come and check it out it's like really really cool here like i'm this is phenomenal i i am like i said i get goosebumps just thinking about this place <laughs> well thank you so much yeah feel free to come by and we will show you around Local filmmaker <laughs> who's uh, lucky to be working with this crew. <laughs> kind and courteous to me, and honestly, it's amazing. Um, I'm really excited to work on this project. I'm going to be ADing for Jack tomorrow, and I think I'm going to be ADing for Ben on Sunday as well. Um, yeah, I started up my own company. I just, I was, she was second year in film production at the Confederation College when I was first year. Uh, I was born and raised here as well. So like, it's cool that I get a chance to see Aaron again and work with her. It's, yeah. Uh, I've always loved like storytelling and arts. I was actually really into theater in high school. And so like being behind the scenes in theater, just like a natural next step was to get into film. And it's close to home, so like the film program at the college, it was just like a perfect fit. And it's a great program. I'm here with Jack, who's doing a film, and he's from Fort William First Nation. 
Bonjour. Hi, uh, it's nice to be here talking to you today. So my name is Jack. Uh, I live, as you mentioned, on Fort William First Nation. Uh, I grew up in Thunder Bay and spent a lot of my time growing up in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, where I was born. So I'm here in Thunder Bay working with Wapakoni on my latest film entitled Respect Your Elders Chum. So the title is pretty self-explanatory about what the film deals with. Um, the story tells the tale of a man named Chum who's uh, taking advantage of his grandfather by doing things like stealing his pills and selling them for money, uh, which is something that uh, actually happens, I would say, uh, all around. Uh, so this film is really important to me uh, because it's about respecting your elders. That's the message. And that's very important, not only in indigenous culture, but to everybody worldwide. Our elders are the most important thing to our existence because without them, we wouldn't be here. And without them, we wouldn't learn the things that are important for us to know. So this film, uh, it deals with elder abuse, now, abuse, I would like to say, is a strong word. So when you say someone is being abused, often you, you will associate that with physical violence or verbal abuse. Uh, but this tale, the story that I'm telling with this movie is more of subtle abuses um, uh, because not everybody who's abusing somebody is technically abusing them physically. Uh, there's different kinds of abuses uh, that that are all on a different spectrum. So uh, just telling a story uh, from the perspective of the, the person in, who's being victimized, so the elder being played by Roger Nakanagas of Pace Platt First Nation. Uh, and uh, we have uh, the sister in the story who is, is uh, kind of like the good on the in this story so she's women it, to me are are the healers uh f worldwide like women are very important uh in healing and uh all, like problem solving so she is ultimately kind of like the the uh i don't know how to say it, like she's very important to the story that way and she is being played by Morticia Chikaku of uh, Fort William First Nation. And I'm playing the main character, Chum. So I'm, I'm the bad guy in the story, but, but I'm the good guy. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying hard here with this film to put a positive message out, out there and, and uh, help the film community in Thunder Bay connect. I'm working with a lot of local talent, uh, some local uh, filmmakers, local musicians and uh, local actors so it's a really good experience here and this film is going to be really strong it has a great message Wapakoni is here providing like a really great service technically to make this film uh, really broadcast worthy I would say uh, at that technical level so I'm the storyteller that's what I do I, I do a lot of different art forms. I paint, I write, I, I uh, make films a lot, but ultimately I'm a storyteller. That's who I am. I'm a Métis. Uh, indigenous culture, storytelling is an important thing, and especially now uh, because we are trying to reconnect and retell stories that have been lost. And uh, this, this message of respecting your elders is something that is maybe had not been lost but we are certainly losing in society so mm -hmm. i think this film has an important message of respecting your elders and uh i can't go on this interview without giving credit to roger nakanagas he's my wife's grandfather he is the guy who came to me and said uh jack we should do a story about elder abuse and he's an elderly man himself so he's uh someone that I look up to. He always comes to me with great ideas and uh, and uh, this is me giving back to him and giving him a spotlight and a voice. 
So it's very it, important to me that way. Is the film um, in an urban setting or is it on a First Nation kind of setting? Uh, this film takes place on Fort William First Nation. So that's not necessarily in the story that it is Fort William First Nation, but that's just where we're shooting. And that's where I live. Uh, I, I also have lots of family connections with Pace Platte First Nation, which is where Roger is from. So we're, it's different indigenous communities coming together here and also the community of Thunder Bay and uh, certainly uh, we've got filmmakers here from Nova Scotia and Montreal and uh, places in between. Uh, in one person is working with Wapakoni, Erin Collins. She's a local from Fort William First Nation so she's very key to this operation. Um, so everyone here at Wapakoni uh, just gives someone like me who's just a local independent a very very important tool that is not easily accessed without a lot of funding and the funding is not never really easily available it's always a process to try and get that writing and as an artist you don't you kind of don't want to be fighting for that all you want to be doing is telling your story you're the artist you're not the businessman so it, it really helps to have a crew like Wapakoni and this initiative that they're doing and here and traveling it's just amazing where that where they've started and and where they are now and and what it's doing for me and this story do you think that your is is your story going to be complete by the time they they move on in about 2 weeks yeah so we're wrapping up the shoot this weekend and we'll be going into editing basically immediately in the following days. Um, so the screening for the f films that are being made locally here is scheduled for August 17th, I believe. Uh, I don't know if they have a location secured, but that will definitely be uh, made known in the future. But it will be finished. So you'll be able to watch Respect Your Elders Chum in the near future here in Thunder Bay uh, at the Wapakoni screening. So you heard that. And we will keep you up, up to date where the showing will be. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And it's very nice to meet you. Miigwech. Peace. It was a beautiful day at Cherry's Park Sunday as we witnessed Plan B, Strike 9, making the video called Heritage. We got to sit down with Ben Murray, owner and operator of GhettoChildren.com. Here's what he had to say. GhettoChildren.com offers services as digital distribution, recording, mixing, and mastering, workshops, websites, local design, music videos and much more. You can contact at 355-7667. you like to be called? Uh, plan B Strict 9. <laughs> <laughs> plan B Strict 9, right on. That's your stage name? Yes. Oh, yes. cool. And so you're from Thunder Bay here? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was raised in Thunder Bay. I've been everywhere, but I, I, I tend to stay here because there's so many issues that need to be dealt with in the city that I, I, I just keep gravitating back here cause to try and do my part, kind of, yeah. So you do a lot of, um, you've done a lot of this kind of recording and now you've been recently um, hired. Yeah, it's really interesting <laughs> actually, it was really random. I came here to do a, a music video with them and they're doing one for my song called Heritage, which is about being multicultural and not really knowing who you are, or knowing your culture, because I just actually met my great uncle, Daniel Paul, from Nova Scotia like two weeks ago, and I didn't even know. I knew my grandmother's name, but I wasn't sure. Like, I'd never met her, you know, and she lives in Chubanakini. It's a Mi'kmaq reservation <coughs> on the East Coast, and uh, I'm Scottish, Italian, and Mi'kmaq, and I'd, I knew a lot about the two other cultures because they're well established like thousand year history, you know, like it wasn't suppressed, right? But Mi'kmaq, like no one even speaks it around here. I went to the university to learn it and I was told that I would have to go to the East Coast directly to learn the language because no one around here even spoke it. And yeah, and that really kind of upset me. So that's when I started writing the song. 
And then I delved into it deeper and I found out that our original written language had been altered by Jesuit priests so they could teach us their prayers when they first got here and they put their symbols in it. And so now we don't even know which is which, you know, like we don't know the original language anymore. It's just a horrifying situation. So I wrote the song about kind of being stuck in the middle, like, because I have a heritage on both sides, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of like the the living embodiment of what happened to, to everyone. So mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy, yeah. You don't look very old. Like, how long have you been doing this? Oh, I'm actually 30. I don't look 30 years old, but <laughs> I just turned 30. <laughs> so, like, 20 years almost I've been doing this. So, wow. it's crazy, yeah. And you've learned it on your own. Was it more self? Yeah, it was totally self taught, actually. My dad's a musician, but he's more of like the guitar kind of stuff, right? So, it was like, yeah, when I got into this, he kind of like was poking fun at me, like, it's never going to do anything kind of thing, you know what I mean? But as time progressed, it started to become the more main music source now. Like, digital music is kind of like the thing. So, <laughs> he's kind of like apologizing for not believing in it at first, but now he's like totally embraces what we do. So, that's uh, awesome. and, and that's most encouraging to yeah, you. Yeah, right? it really is. It really is. Because he raised me, right? So, it's good to have him on my side when it comes to that stuff because we're both kind of doing the same thing. So, it's. It's nice to have him believe in what I'm doing too, kind of. <laughs> yeah. And you, so you worked with this kind of equipment before, like you do. What do you do with us? Yeah, I I usually use the program called Ableton at home, actually, and this is a new program to me, Logic Pro. But they're all basically the same. So when I got here, I kind of just set it up for them, and that's how they recognized what I did. And they were like, "You're better at this stuff than we are. Like, <laughs> we should give you a job." So they hired me for 30 hours, which yeah. really amazing. Yeah super happy to be able to do what I love for a little while and get paid for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had uh, the youth come in yet? Um, they just put me on, like I signed the contract yesterday. So wow. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to be getting people in on Monday, I think. So nice. that's the plan. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> so you work with um, the studio that's over here in the... Yeah, the like we part. have the vocal booth. There's a guitar in there. Um, two different microphones, there's a vocal microphone and then uh, like a regular highball type so you can get your guitar too at the same time. So we can have not just rappers, we can have just uh, singers and songwriters and stuff come in too. So if anyone is interested out there, <laughs> come down. It's going to be awesome. We're here till the 18th, I think. So, yeah. Is this, and I, I, I know that it's um, targeting towards the uh, youth indigenous youth mm -hmm. um but anybody who has like say like an empowering story can yeah. they come down as well i believe so i, I i'm not 100 percent because i haven't spoken with them about it but yeah. they told me it was open to anyone so I, i'm pretty sure that i can just whoever really has the urge to come in here and do something and change better for the community is more than welcome for sure do they bring can they bring their own beats do you help them create beats um, they can bring their own or we can do it here like that's kind of yeah it's kind of nice that we get the, the ability to do that like we have everything here that we can build it for them from the ground up because it's kind of expensive to, <laughs> to buy beats sometimes so it's nice when they can come in here and do it from the ground up right that's a really interesting yeah. point that you have that you would say that because it does take a lot to even make your own music right yeah. it does and like it took me I've probably accumulated thousands of dollars worth of equipment over the years, bit by bit. You know, you start with a couple hundred dollar thing and then you build from there and eventually you got tons of stuff and it's like, you know, <laughs> it's, it takes years and years of building, but mm -hmm. like, yeah, like I w I, that's why I'd, I want to give back now because now that I've accumulated everything, I can kind of like, you know, come out here and be like, you know, here, this is what I know. This is what I have. Let's do something kind of, so. Right on, yeah, right awesome. on. <clears throat> you kind of remind me of, um, <clears throat> I love your hat. Thank you. You remind, <laughs> you remind me of a young Stevie Ray Vaughan. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge compliment, man. Jeez. I wish I could play guitar like that. <laughs> Imagine it. Hey, it's in the beats. Yeah, really. It's in the, the digital style now. <laughs> yes, absolutely it is. The young Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah. <laughs> it's Ben Murray. Come down and check him out. Awesome. He's, he's over at the trailer at Intercity Park. Sure. Yes. Yeah, well, Alan, thank you guys. All right. <laughs> all but there's people out there that want to know more about you. Well, they're going to have to listen to more of my music. So it's all in your music? Yes. Your whole life is in your music? That's what I am.
role model that you can right now, you know? Yes. And I actually ran into him on uh, Thanksgiving, and he gave me a hug and, like, told me he loved me and that he appreciated what I was doing for him. So, and that was the last time I saw him before he passed away. So it was really nice that I got to do that. <laughs> Put a closure to it, right? Yeah, for sure. Emoting. My music should answer every question that they have for me. Yeah, but, but but there's people out there that want to know more about you. Well, they're gonna have to listen to more of my music. Over 4,000 participants, 24 nations, over 40 communities in Canada, and a thousand short films, 750 original songs and musical works, and 150 awards and mentions. Wapakoni will be showing their finale on August 17, 2018. We will keep you updated. The Nijawaitamog and Nishinaabe Nakaz with Net Newsledger in Thunder Bay.